on the NIV, on the side it says the word Jacob means pain. It's because his mother had pain when she gave birth to him, and so she named this poor kid pain. By the way, he really hates him probably somewhere around 14 years old. So now we've got teenage Jabez, and Jabez's name means pain, because every time he's called from, from, from his room, or every time you know, he sits somewhere, every time his name is used, he's reminded of the fact he causes his mother pain. And if, and if his name doesn't remind him, she'll remind him. We didn't clean your room, that's fine. She should have called me pain when you were born. I mean, it is. You know, I, I, I grew up in here. I've already shown that. 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 i i and that's what this woman is like. In fact, the Bible says that Jabez had brothers. So if this woman is dating her children according to the painful experiences she had when, she, when the children were born, who knows what their names might be? Bed pan too cold. Uh, nurse rude. You know, bill too big. I mean, who knows? I, I'm from a Native American background. We name our people some oddball things too, right? Whatever's happening on the day, deer dances in snow. That's a guy's name I know. Deer dancing in snow is his name in Cherokee. And uh, all kinds of stuff. Rabbit ran on all kinds of crazy. You know, Oreos fell from habit. And I just have no idea what it might be. Crazy Cherokee and name of people anything. Well, so I'm staring at what's going on here. Okay? Well, that's the kind of humorous side, the serious side is if you're living in a home of somebody, uh, who is constantly tethered to the past, constantly preoccupied with their disappointment in life, and, and constantly reminding everybody of how horrible life has been, you're living a postage stamp experience. You know what I mean? You're living in a small, dear, angry, backward looking. Hey, Mom, can you pass the salt? Yes, I, that reminds me of the time that, I, that it didn't go well for me in college. And, you know, you're like, Mom, just the salt, really. That's all I'm looking for here. You know? And I get some lunch money. Oh, you kids. I remember when I was there. You know, and just go, oh, please. You know, shoot me now. And so, this is, this is what he's doing. Well, that's what's going on in verse 9. Something happens to me in verse 9. Verse 10. And I have a guess about what it is. But I'm not going to take a lot of time to develop it. I'll just, I'll just mention it where it is. Because clearly... By uh, verse 10, something completely different happened. By verse 10, he's recognized the curse that's on his life. And something's caused him to stand back and have what I call a Jabez moment and ask God to break the curse that's defining his life. We know that because he says, look, free the teacher from pain. I've got a drone so fast, so I can pretty much just break this curse that has come down to me from the previous generation and that is defining my life. And it's making me small and it's causing me to live this negative, bitter, backward looking, close to stamp experience. Enlarge me. That's what he says. Leave grace. Enlarge my territory. Obviously, God did it. And at the beginning of verse 9, it says that God considered it, considered it honorable. It's like a weird effect. Why? What happened between verse 9 and verse 10 that caused Jabez to realize that it didn't be better? Most people, in my opinion, who are, in my experience, who are backward and bitter and angry and, and, and you know, I mean backward, you know, financially or something, how about looking backward all the time at what's happened previously in life and the negative of it? Most of them never get a vision for what could happen to them. And many of them never see the bigger picture. So 